Hello again friends, welcome back to Bob Moss Nano Tanks. Thanks for joining me for another video. Today I have my top five shrimp frequently asked questions, FAQ facts, whatever you wanna call them. Before we get into it, make sure to like the video if you like my face, I guess. Subscribe if you're new here. Leave a comment below, really helps with the algorithm. Maybe hit the bell notification. Share it with your friends if you like my shirt. Yeah, okay, let's get into my top five FAQs. All right, so I'm gonna try and keep each answer short and sweet. I don't wanna be rambling too much here. So if you want further details, just ask below in the comments and I will expand on my thoughts and help you out if you have uh, more specific questions than the general FAQ I'm going to be listing here. Anyway, uh, FAQ frequently asked uh, question, shrimp question number one, can you keep neocaridina and caridina in the same tank? General rule of thumb is no, nope. not really. If you do, one's gonna thrive, one's gonna suffer. Uh, my personal experience, I have the hardiest Neocaridina shrimp you have ever seen. Uh, Daniel Cordon it can, can vouch for that. I've literally taken these shrimp from hard water into soft water, back into hard water like two days later uh, with no drip acclimation and they survive. These these Neocaridina are absolutely insanely hardy. Those are my orange cold Neocaridina. So those ones I have no problem keeping in the soft water setups and they've been having babies and I've been pulling them out. I mentioned it in some live streams, um, what I've been doing in those tanks. Generally, no because they require different parameters. Like I said, the, the Caridina shrimp require a soft water, the Neo Caridina require a hard water. And if you go like in the middle with a neutral water, neither one is gonna do the best. Uh, the Neos will probably uh, thrive in a mixed environment better than the Caridina. The Caridina requires such specific uh, soft water, acidic water parameters where the Neo Caridina are a, a hardier type of shrimp. And if you drip acclimate them, they can they can basically adjust to almost any uh, any water parameters. But in general, no, you don't want to mix them because of the active substrate, the, the different parameters. They, they just require slightly different things unless you have the Super Neo Caridina that I have. Um, so maybe? No, don't do it. Frequently asked question number two. Can I use CO2 in my shrimp tank? If you know what you're doing, yes, you can. You can use CO2 injection if you have a regulator, if you have a professional setup uh, and the the bubbles aren't really affecting the pH very much. Problem with using CO2 in your shrimp tank is that when the CO2 comes on in the day, it's gonna lower the pH and then it, you turn this, or the CO2 should turn off at night, which is going to raise the pH. So every day it's gonna lower and every night it's gonna raise and that kind of parameter swinging can can affect the shrimp with their breeding and their survival, their, their longevity. Um, so unless you really, really know what you're doing and you keep the CO2 at a very low amount and you don't do a DIY thing, that's for sure. Make sure if you're gonna do it to invest in the professional CO2 setups and you might be able to get away with it, but I would generally just say no for most of us because where most of us are shrimp keepers, not planted tank people. If you're a planted tank person who's getting into shrimp, you'll probably have a bit better luck running CO2 in your shrimp tanks. But but yeah, because of the pH swings, probably not a recommended thing to use. Question three, how long until my shrimp have babies? So when you get new shrimp in your tank, it will take a few weeks for them to really adjust and get comfortable in the tank. And then you may see some breeding. That... You might get lucky and like when you drip acclimate them and put them in, you see a molt and they happen to, uh, to breed right there and you have eggs right away. And then to really answer the question, it's about 28 days, the um, gestation period from fertilization. Once you see the eggs, Th like three and a half, four weeks later, about 28 days, you will see the babies in your tank. If the eggs hatch, if they fertilize, if she doesn't drop them. Uh, there's a lot of factors that go into whether the shrimp will actually carry the eggs long term, especially in the new tank. But I generally say expect new babies within two to three months of adding shrimp into a new tank because you have to get really lucky to get them to uh, fertilize and, and to to, to, to mate and create uh, a new generation right away. That's that's a, more of a luck thing, but for most shrimp, it's gonna take them a month, a month or two to get comfortable, then they're gonna mate, then they're gonna have babies, and then your tanks will explode, and within six months, you should, you know, your numbers should multiply to a more entertaining, what the fuck am I trying to say? 
a more entertaining tank to look at. Nailed it. Question number four is controlling my pH. How do I control my pH in my shrimp tank? If they're so sensitive to pH swings, how do I manage this? How do I avoid pH swings and killing all my shrimp? Well, in the soft water and the Karenina uh, shrimp tanks, that's really, really simple. It's your active substrate. Wow. The active substrate in the tank uh, is going to buffer the water and keep the pH down there, like uh, hopefully below 6.5. Once you start to see the pH rise in a soft water and an active substrate setup, that's when you know that the soil is exhausted and you probably need to look at, at replacing the soil, maybe setting up a new tank, cycling it, moving the shrimp over there. In a neocaridina setup, it's a little more difficult. It's the KH value in the water. That's why they recommend to have like a three to four KH for neocaridina shrimp. Those carbonates are what actually kind of buffer the water. So if your tap water is a little softer, if you're using some remineralized water, I do recommend using a bit of crushed coral in the tanks. I have a video on that. You can check that out. I'll try and put a, I'll try to remember to put a card here. If I don't put a card here, someone, someone comment that I didn't put the, the thing and I'll put the thing. That's all it takes. Bruh. Anyway, some crushed coral will keep adding carbonates back into the water and it'll help buffer that pH for you. So uh, the caridina tank, it's the substrate, and a neo caridina tank, it's the KH in the water, and uh, I recommend crushed coral to help that. Yeah, I need a drink. And the final question, number five, numero, sank, see, whatever. Um, Why my shrimp die? That is a very complicated question. I actually have a two-part video series on it. I'll try to put the things up there again. Yes. But <laughs> basically, shrimp like consistency in your water. So parameter swings, temperature swings, uh, things like that. Anything that, that changes the parameters within a few hours can greatly, greatly affect your shrimp while they're dying. There might also be toxins. You might have a disease. There are so many reasons why your shrimp might die. So I, I personally recommend going and checking out my two videos. It's, I think it's about 20 minutes. It'll take you to get through both of them. And I cover a, a wide range of topics on, on shrimp deaths but the the by god i can't talk but the most important thing is consistency if you keep your ph and your temperature and, and your parameters if you keep your parameters consistent the shrimp aren't going to have an issue and then when they do die uh, you'll be able to narrow it down more. Maybe there's overpopulation. It could just be old age. Or if you see them darting around the tank all of a sudden, it's probably uh, some kind of toxin like hand sanitizer or uh, I don't know, uh, fertilizer, um, tick medicine, some, some medicine, flea medicine for your dog. Uh, there's a number of reasons or there's a number of things that could get in the tank and kill them. Even uh, some of the, the diffuser things, the diffuser whatever thingy some of those scents uh, and um, essential oils can get into the water and, and affect the shrimp. And in those cases, you're gonna wanna just pop in some active carbon and quickly save your shrimp. But that's all covered in my videos. So I hope I stayed sort of coherent and answered these uh, questions. If I appear in a different outfit, it's because I had to retake something loser so thank you so much for watching that is all i hope you really really enjoyed if you did make sure to smash the like button below subscribe if you're new here hit the bell notification leave a comment below maybe ask your question i'll probably answer it in the comments it might feature in an upcoming video who knows i have my patreon shout outs brian dotson michael redmond and leather turtle my youtube channel member shout outs tater salad daniel cordon mitch bottoma robert redmond and 613 prospecting if you want to shout out like those guys support links are in the description below check those out i have my uh, hobby shop bobmoss.shop i also have a discord you can join i have a 24 7 twitch stream you know check out all that stuff in the description and remember guys until next time keep your shrimp pants strong bye bye now